Well, one of the most important parts, in fact, the most important part of fly fishing is the casting. Absolutely. And uh, I have Jeff Wagner here with me. Jeff, uh, you belong to a casting organization that really promotes the art of casting. Federation of Fly Fishers? Yes, but uh, don't you have a, in there a professional group that goes American out there? Casting Association? Yeah! So, you're starting out with, most people are going to start out on panfish, they're going to start out on trout, and five weight just the average uh, rod that they're going to have. Now, we've talked about lengths, uh, nine foot, eight and a half foot, that's a good way to start out. And Cabela's, of course, uh, they have graphite rods that they make. Uh, you you uh, represent Loomis. I do. Uh, they sell Loomis. I represent St. Croix. And let me tell you, uh, they're beautiful rods. It's hard to find a bad fly rod anymore. It is. You know, a good graphite rod really, you know, Cabela's has them anywhere from $100 on up. Um, they're good fishing tools. And, uh, you know, even from St. Croix and Loomis and that you know, lower a couple hundred dollar range. So just to go over a couple of things I think that Jack already told you, but just to give you a couple practice exercises to do. On the pick up and lay down, when you're picking the line up and laying it down, picking it up and laying it down, if you're on a stream or on a lake, a great way to be able to practice your accuracy, put on a fly, something that's gonna make a nice ring in the water when the fly hits, pick it up, lay it down. That ring is gonna be created from the fly hitting. Now, pick the fly up and try to hit the center of that ring and do it every time. If you're off by a foot or two and next time you're over here, then try to hit the center of that ring. Keep trying to hit the center of the ring. The point is that, you know, fish have a, a certain diameter of um, where they're gonna be trying to feed. So if we keep hitting the center of that ring, it's like as if we were casting to fish feeding. It'll work on your accuracy. The next tip is going to put a little bit of everything together that we've talked about. It's going to work on a shoot, it's going to work on carrying some line, it's going to work on that fishing technique of just making one false cast. So Jack will like this. So we're going to start with about 10 feet of line. What I want you to do is pick up, shoot line, and lay it back down. Pick up, shoot line, lay it back when down. We think spin casting, we think unidirectional stroke. And when we say short stroke, we think I need to pick up this rod and then power it forward. Yeah. In reality, we're doing the same thing front and back, which is very dissimilar. Uh, back cast and then forward cast the same. Right. Which is very dissimilar to spin casting where we're throwing the weight of the lure like this and then all my power can come in that forward stroke. Here, we have to throw the line behind us and then throw the line in front of us. Now, one of the things I tell people is think about a spin cast as being weight and you're picking it up like a baseball and you're tying some monofilament to it and you're throwing it. Right. And that weight of that ball pulls the line out. And so what we have to do is we have to throw the fly line instead of the lure. Uh, I think it's kind of good to know that line is weighted uh, in grains, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, and it matches the action of the rod. It does. So in like a five weight, the five weight, the first 30 feet of a five weight line might weigh 145 grains. And that's a standard weight. And that's what helps this rod bend or load or flex. And that's really what stores up that energy to cast that rod. So it's really important that we have this line weighted and that it matches the rod. You need, I think, important to know the stroke. Uh, we're gonna start with the basic cast. We're gonna, we're gonna actually turn our bodies this way here. All right, now, what we've gotta do is to look at this rod. And I want you to think of it as an extension of your arm. It's simple physics. Jack, Energy flows best in what? A straight line, right? One direction. Now, if he bends this wrist, and let's let's look at the rod tip and see where it goes. Bend that wrist for us. Now stop. Look at this. There's a big curve here. First thing my son said when I was teaching the fly cast, well, Dad, of course you don't bend your wrist. 50% of the energy is going to go off in space. The other one, it's back there, and it, it, isn't a rod like a rifle? Wherever you point it, the energy's going to go. The energy happens to be in a bullet. Yeah, you know, everything when fly casting, we can break down into one, we're going to call it a principle. Some people will call it the substance of fly casting is that the fly line follows the path of the rod tip. And you'll say, wait, when, wait a minute, wait a minute. When I'm moving the rod, I'm moving it like this. It has to be moving in an arcing or doming shape. But remember, the point of moving the rod is to get the rod to flex. When the rod flexes, the tip of the rod is moving in a straight line. So as the tip of the rod's moving through the air up here, 
it's the rod is curved and it's moving in a straight line or very near a straight line. If it moved in a perfectly straight line, the fly line would collide against the tip. But remember that principle when you're out casting. Fly line follows the path of the rod tip. So if I go back and I do as Jack said and I throw a big wide loop like this, now the tip of the rod, since it's, the rod is not bending, the tip of the rod is moving in an arcing or doming shape. And remember, fly line follows the path of the rod tip. The fly line now is moving in this big wide casting stroke like that. Yeah, so one other thing, just as a, as a quick visual, I think that's important. Um, when we think about the casting stroke being a V, when we talk about trajectory, if I want the fly line to go down in front of me, I can just tilt that V, right? right. Down like that. Take this, your body, almost like you're casting. Yep, yep, we can tilt that V down. So it would look like this. This is a normal casting stroke. Now I'm going to cast down. We're going to tilt it. Now you can see I have a high back cast and a low front cast. High back cast, low front cast. What that's doing is it's actually shortening the distance between the tip of the rod and where the fly is going. You know, if I'm casting like this, I have to wait, I have to stop the rod, and now the wind has a ton of time to be able to impact that fly and blow it off course. However, if I shorten the distance and I cast right at my target like this, change my angle of attack, I can throw that fly right at the target.